you, it's a story of tragedy and triumph, defeat and victory, and God's mercy and grace. It's a message of salvation, renewal, inspiration, and hope. Yes. Hope that's offered to all of us that call upon his name. Amen. Now my life, my life is a miracle. It's a miracle that I'm at Laurel Church today. I mean, it's a miracle that I'm alive. But miracles don't come without trials, tragedies, and tribulations. And there's many of you that are here today because you're going through your own adversity in your life. See, I don't believe in, a, in coincidence, okay? I just don't, okay? A coincidence is based on when God chooses to show up and he just remains anonymous. But you're here for a reason. Amen. I believe that lives are going to be changed. Hearts are going to be healed. Relationships restored, addictions broken. There's going to be an explosion of God's love right here at Moral Church. Now, before I share my story, I, I've been hanging out with Pastor Larry and Victoria over this, this weekend. We've been having such a great time. But the one thing about Larry, okay, kind of aggravates me a little bit, is my wife keeps saying to me, oh my God. Did you see Larry do that for Victoria? Did you see that? Did you see, he brought up the chair. I'm here this since I got here, okay? And so last night, you know, I bet something, and okay, I know Larry probably rubbed her shoulders, okay? <laughs> but, but, hold on. No, it, it is such a great witness, but because I actually found, there's this, 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 this doll I have right here. It's called um, Harold the Happy Husband. But I'm actually going to rename him, and he's going to be Larry, the wonderful husband. Now, okay, is, is this on Larry? Larry, is this on? Can I? Is it? Okay. Um, I hear some things that Larry says to Victoria. Why don't we go to the mall? Did you want some new shoes? The ball game really isn't that important. I'd rather spend time with you. Here, you take the road. As long as I'm with you, I don't care what we watch. <laughs> you know, I think it's really important that we talk about our relationship. <laughs> now, as much as I tell you Larry has been a great mentor to me, I actually found oh, no. Wilma, the wonderful wife. <laughs> Guys? Don't we? 
Like for example, I want you guys to finish my sentence, okay? Money doesn't grow on trees. Good things come to those who wait. early bird gets the Burn. See, my dad used to wake me up for school. And he would say, mock. He's my dad was from Brooklyn, okay? So he'd say, mock. That's how you go, mock, mock. Early bird gets the worm. I go, Dad, good things come to those who wait. <laughs> but my, here's the one that got me, okay? My dad, um, my dad got uh, this, this, he used to use a push lawnmower. Remember the lawnmowers with the blades spin as you push it? My dad would have that. So to make money, I mean, it was, this was a different era back then. We had to go out and you know, cut grass and stuff like that. And I remember uh, always going to people's houses, knocking on the door, and they often say no. And I would go home dejected. And I'd say, my dad goes, what's wrong? I go, Dad, every house I go to, they always say no. And my dad said something I have never forgotten. He said, Mark, the worst thing anybody is ever going to say to you is no. But what happens when they say yes? And you know, I took that years now, years later, I took that into my ministry. And I thought about how many people we can invite to church. My wife this year, we had a big thing at church and they gave away an iPad for bringing the most people. And, and that weekend we brought over 37 people by simply saying, you want to go to church. Now, think, think of the difference here. By simply asking that question, would you like to go to church? Think of the difference we can make in somebody's life. Now, there's people that may say no, but what happens when they say yes? Yes to church, yes to Jesus, yes to salvation, yes to eternal life. And you can have a part in someone's eternal destination by simply asking them, hey, you want to go to church with me? Think about this. Of all the people that we don't ask, and the opportunity to say, hey, you want to go to church with us this weekend? Now, my, uh, we grew up Jewish. My last name used to be Merowitz. And I don't know how many of you know a lot of Jews, but Jews have a great sense of humor, okay? And I said to my father, I said, Dad, how can they shorten our name from Merowitz to Merrow? He goes, oh, Mark, your grandpa Billy, when he came over from the old country, he got a clothing store in Brooklyn, New York. He got the wit scared out of him. <laughs> what? <laughs> so, but we, uh, we, <laughs> we grew up uh, Jewish. Um, this is me at eight years old. Now, this is where my life changed. This is when we had our first setback. This is when my parents got divorced. And I'll never forget it, because I came home from school. My mom was sitting in a chair, and she had her head buried in her hands, and she was crying. I walked, I said, Mom, what's wrong? And she lifted up her head, tears were streaming down her face, and she said, Mark, Daddy's leaving. I mean, I was just a little kid, I really didn't understand. I ran to my mother and father's bedroom, and there was my father. He had his back to the door, and he's putting clothes in the suitcase. And I stood at the door and I said, Daddy, where are you going? And my dad was startled, and turned and he goes, Mark, I want you to know, I love you so much. I said, well, where are you going? And my father just came right out and told me. He said, Mark, your, your mom and dad are no longer gonna be together. Your daddy's gonna go. And I remember just feeling devastated. I ran over to my dad's suitcase, and I grabbed the handles, and I fell to my knees, and I started begging my father not to leave. I said, Daddy, please don't go. You're my best friend. And he saw me crying, and he said something I have never forgotten. He said, Mark, don't cry. Everything's gonna be okay. And he pulled that suitcase out of my hand. He walked out that door, and I was screaming, Daddy, please don't go. You're my best friend. And he was gone. Now, he didn't leave our lives. My dad would pick us up every Sunday. But it was the first time that I learned about a man named Jesus. See, my mom was converted because of my father. So when they got the, a divorce, my mom started reading us bedtime stories out of the Bible, children's Bible, about a man that could walk on the water, give sight to the blind, heal the sick, raise the dead. I thought, Mom, can you read a story about Jesus? So my mom decides to take us to our first church. Never been in church before. It was a big Catholic church in Buffalo, New York, named Holy Angels. This is the actual church right here. And I remember sitting in the back, and I don't know if you've ever been to a Catholic church, it's a beautiful mass, and they start off playing the organ music. 
And the organ music starts playing, and all of a sudden, at the top of the altar, this man comes out, and he had this long white robe on, and he looked like a king. And he's walking to the altar, and I pull my mom's boss, I go, Mom, is that Jesus? And she goes, no, shh, <laughs> And then he walks up to the altar, and he spreads his arm, and he looks up and he says, I mean, this is what I said, I was a little kid. My father plays dominoes with your father. <laughs> and my other brother and I would do that at home. We'd walk in the house going, my brother plays dominoes with your My mom would get so mad because you don't make fun of her, did you? Okay, you see? This is back when your parents could smack you upside your head. Right? What, what, what do you guys got there? You got timeout? Oh, timeout, that's real tough. Man, we have timeout. We have blackout. <laughs> and, and see, the thing was, my mom, she was real little, she didn't really hurt us, you know. She used to come at us, we call them flippers, because she'd do this. <laughs> we, would, we, would, we would never get hurt. I mean, never had no neurological effects or long term brain damage or something. <laughs> <laughs> what was he talking about? <laughs> no, I was just kidding. But it was the first time I learned about a God named Jesus. Now, here's the difference, okay? I knew of the historical Jesus, but I never had a relationship with Jesus. See, there's a big difference. Like, for example, if I know, we all know who President Obama is, but if I went to the White House and said, hey, I, I know President Obama and I'm coming to see him, I never get it. But if President Obama knew me, I'd get in. Right. You see, it says in Matthew 727, it says 7.22, many will say to me on that day, we prophesize your name, we cast out demons, we perform miracles. And God says, I never knew you. Depart from me, you evildoer. That is one of the most profound statements in the Bible to think about what it would feel like to hear those words or for your husband or your kids or family or loved ones to ever have to hear those words. Depart from me, I never knew you. See, we can't serve him on Sundays and go back to our own way on Monday. When you choose to serve Jesus, you give up your right to have it your way. Get have it your way. He's not Burger King, he's the King of Kings. So this is the apartment I grew up in right here. And um, we, were, we were so poor. Um, my mom, you know, she always 